Hello and welcome Hi. to this week's <gasps> Royal Travel and so Yacht. It was time we've we've never done a video about the royal family. I don't and think anything. we realized that we'd never done a video when we were talking about it. And we were like, wait a second. <laughs> I was called waiting for the right moment. And the right moment is it's, upon us because it's now. <laughs> we now have a new king and queen of Denmark. So and we saw what we could yes. um, in we downtown Copenhagen. We're going to talk about that along with a little brief history. And more yes. importantly, our thoughts as Americans on what mm. we think about the fact that we live in this country that has a monarchy on this week's Traveling Young. I just want to say, say, you know who's the real king? It's Brisket. And here he is. Look, everybody asks about Brisket all the time. And he's here. He needs a haircut, but he's here. A bath and a haircut. I'm so sorry, Brisket. We lucked. Okay, so starting, we're going to talk about just like very, I mean, the whole. It would take a, a very, series of videos. A series of videos. So we're just going to talk about some key highlights in the royalty. First of all, you you wanted to mention the first Margareta, which was in. Margareta den first. Which is a long which time is ago. Way, way back, a long uh, time ago. But in 1448, the king started to have the name either Christian or Frederick. Yes. Um, and, uh, except for, so it was the Christian the first, then it was John. <laughs> Which is not a very Danish name, if I'm uh, being honest. Yeah, I'll be honest, that's true. And then Christian the third, then Frederick the first, or Christian, yeah, second, then Frederick the first, and it alternated yep. between Christians and Fredericks until we got to, uh, the current queen. It or, did. sorry, the previous crop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. wow, I'm sorry. Jeez. The uh, the queen as of a few days ago. Yes. Um, uh, but backing up on that chain of Christians and Fredericks. Fredericks. Uh, Christian, the what? What's your favorite Christian from the royal affair? Christian the seventh. Oh, very interesting. So scandalous. I love it. Yeah. Oh, before him though, the Christian that built half of Copenhagen. Christian the fourth. Yeah, lots of castles. You see Christian the fourth's logo on, yeah. and then Christian the uh, the seventh, and yeah. then Frederick the seventh. In uh, 1849, uh, I can't see very well. I can't always remember. It's like 1849. 1849. Yeah. Yes. He signed the Danish constitution that started to give power back to the people. Yeah. Which was a really interesting thing. Frederick VII. And I just want to note, because I just found this out today, that Denmark was not always before this. I knew it was constitutional monarchy, and then I knew it was an absolute monarchy. But there was a period before even that. When it was an elected monarchy, mm. which I find fascinating. I didn't was even that know that was the, a thing. The Christians and the Fredericks. Um. That was prior to the Christians <laughs> and the Fredericks. And so uh, Queen Margareta II yes. um, broke the Christian and Frederick chain. She did. And, but then she brought it back. Uh, yeah. But she, yeah. And she brought it back because we now have King Frederick X. Yes. And his son is Christian. So uh, assuming all goes back. as planned, it'll be back to the Christians. <laughs> And I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm no Nostradamus, but I feel like his first is going to be called Frederick. Be Frederick. I feel like it's maybe Good possible chance. it'd be Frederick the 11th, but who knows. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing. It's just like really brief. And you go, I mean, Danish history goes back to like Harold Bluetooth and all this I stuff forever ago. There's so some, much. and we've, as you've seen, probably we love this stuff. We've been yeah. to like... We've been to Yelling to see all the, the Yelling yep. Stone. We've been to Yeast Priest to see where Frederick the Seventh yep. lived. I mean, we've been to so many places. And you can go yourself to Roskilde and see almost every single one of these dudes. I don't there there's a couple that aren't there. John may not be there. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> but I mean, can you imagine like for us, it's like we gotta be like, you know, go through like, you know, twenty three and me to find out what our family yeah, is and we uh, have no idea. They just like, oh, just go to the oh my family. Yeah, oh the they're just all at risk. They're all there. That's everybody. They're all there. And so it's a it's a really unique, cool place if you've never been to the cathedral yeah, to see really beautiful. all these Danish royals from so many years there. Mm. It's a pretty remarkable uh, experience. Yeah. So that is obviously not the twenty five episode history of Danish royalty, <laughs> but just a few important, interesting notes of things that you know, the one from the movie, the one who signed the constitutional monarchy, yeah. uh, the most recent queen who broke the chain of Christians and Fredericks. Yeah. 
And now we're here at Frederick the 10th. That but before so that, before that, let's just say a couple things about the queen. Um, first of all, uh, sorry, the previous queen, Queen yes. Margaretta. Um, first I mean, of all, I think she is still queen. Yeah, she, yes. yeah I guess. I, I don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, um, prior to her, um, they had to actually change the secession yep. law so that a woman could be the descend yep. to the throne. So that was uh, changed for her sake so that she could actually be the queen. Yes. Because during the inherited monarchy, they passed a law that said it, well, typically, even with the elected monarchy, it went to the oldest son. And then with the inherited monarchy, it, they then made it official and went to the oldest son. And then when Marbella came around. Right. Yeah. No so uh, it was a so. previously a male dominated Christian Frederick vibe <laughs> and John. Um, but yeah, so that was uh, interesting. And she was just, you know, we saw her twice. We did. Um, one time we were pretty close when they mm -hmm. opened the new Metro lines. Here's a yes, picture of when we saw her then. And then the next time was at the Rayville Festival in the summer of 2022. I didn't get any pictures and stuff of her when she was sitting because it was off to my side and I felt it would have looked weird. Well, we kind of did, but like there was one I really poor one. <laughs> I just felt it, but I got a video of her hat walking. So <laughs> this is her hat. So you can see those were, and it's, I think the accessibility of her is just was such an amazing thing as a, as a person who comes from a place, you know, we come from the U S yeah. where anybody that's political or, I mean, not that they're political necessarily, but government involved that yeah. like of stature, there's like bodyguards around them yeah. and like presidents of like snipers on buildings. <laughs> and figure. it was really interesting to be like that close and that like the respect that people had uh, to treat her well, yeah. and uh, and and the fact that they're so loved and and admired as a family is a pretty cool thing. Well, I, I, I think she's a big reason why. Yeah, and that the you know the monarchy, the the family itself seems very down to earth. Yeah, they, it seems that way, and all the stuff that uh, King, not King Frederick, uh, the yeah. royal run stuff that he does to encourage exercising and going out and running and doing things with with you mm -hmm. know just just average people. It's a, I think it kind of like reemphasizes this. Somewhat, I mean, obviously they're not completely equal, or we're not all completely equal to them, but still, some level of connection to the average person, and not having a massive difference between, you know, part of the laws of the intellect and stuff, yeah. and being a bit more, uh, you know, equal, and having like somebody who's rich to be both friends with whoever it doesn't matter. Well, I feel like he has a very, very normal love story with now Queen yeah. Mary. And actually, the funny thing is, I knew nothing about that, and then we were in Latvia. And, uh, like, the only English channel in our hotel room, um, for some reason, it was, like, the Hallmark movie history, uh, about them when they met in Australia. And, yeah. I learned every, and we were not even in this country. And I learned the whole thing <laughs> from this weird Hallmark-esque movie in a hotel room in Latvia. But we, it's, we, like, we every here. girl's dream, you know? Like, meet a crown prince in a, in a pub in, you know, a yeah, city and at stuff. At Olympic Games. So, hey, be on the lookout. Olympics are this summer. <laughs> Is Christian going to go? Maybe he's going to meet somebody. You oh never know. My. Never know. So uh, yesterday, well, we're recording this on Monday, even though yes. you're going to see it on Tuesday. But we went downtown because I really like I was not focused on getting super close because I didn't want to go like and wait for three hours in the cold. But I wanted to at least be able to see Christian Boslot. Yeah. And be like, because that's like when you go into museums and, and see the paintings of like old, like, you know, uh, uh coronations or yeah. like you know when they'd celebrate a victory from war or something it was always like in that area with the old christian borsalot that you know previous well, versions yeah. before There's they burned down amazing and, coronation painting of I yeah. think, frederick the third in frederick's borsalot and it's just like so incredible and i felt like we needed to at least see so here's some pictures yeah. of us seeing and what we could see. What we could see. <laughs> and, and some video. And I mean, in the end, it was basically like we saw a, a colored dot in between things. So, but, and we could hear them. And then when people were cheering, but it was just neat to be. And I like the scale of being far away, though, and see how many people were there. Um, and and then just, the surprise of seeing like the overhead shots afterwards, because like we're kind of in a little bubble because we could see what we could see. But then we, Maya had sent us some overhead shots, and it was just crazy yeah i mean and so it's been 52 years i mean my whole life and beyond very exciting um and we got to to, to at least kind of see a speck of color 
<laughs> on a balcony. I saw Meta Ferguson's arm, yeah. and I saw uh, Princess Isabella's arm. I'm sure I saw King Frederick's... Somebody's hand. Um, pinky was... finger. <laughs> it's hard to tell from that far away. But, um, so we went downtown to see it, and it was cool. And then we saw the fireworks afterwards. We did. And a uh, nice little celebration. Yeah, and I just so thought it was... Fun. I thought it was not, I mean, what was cool about it too is it's just not like over the top. Like, yeah. I mean, I guess there was a little bit of like, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how often they ride carriages and horses places uh, with horses and stuff, but. But not, even the carriage was, super, yeah. I mean, compared to like. But it's what, super historic. It's like 500 yeah, years old. Is. Um, But they basically were only outside going from yeah. Amelian board to Christian board. And then back and then on the balcony. And that was kind of, they just signed papers. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the papers just said like, I'm out. And then he's <laughs> like, I'm in. It. And that was it. <laughs> and uh, so. But if you compare like, I mean, even the carriage to like what King Charles rode in for his coronation. I mean, yeah. that thing was a crazy right. time. So, so I kind of like how it's a bit more yeah. laid back. I mean, I hesitate to use the word modest because it still is a king. Um, but it was, I think, as modest as it can be. Tasteful. And I think, it's yeah. tasteful. And I think it was, and so it wasn't crazy expensive, too, from a taxpayer <laughs> perspective. You know, we had to pay for it. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, lastly, I wanted to just talk briefly on what our views are about a monarchy. Because as Americans, you know, we have a complicated relationship. <laughs> Slightly. With the idea of kings and queens. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when we moved here... I didn't really know what I thought about it because um, I no. didn't know and understand. I can't necessarily say even today I know and understand everything that they do. I, mean, I feel um, like we know a bit more. Uh, a bit more, yeah. yeah. But I mean, they—they, they, uh, I wasn't sure what to think, you know, because we're like we're raised, yeah, basically to think that kings and queens are not good for yeah. you, and you need to be, you know, you know, republic. People, you, you, republic. Need to, you need to throw tea into the into the harbor <laughs> and not stupid. take their rules and. Uh, <laughs> And, and not be uh, colonized yeah. and stuff, uh, a colony. So um, it was a bit of a change. But, I mean, we're, I think, fairly open-minded. So we yeah. came thinking, you know, this is interesting. It's different. Let's experience another culture. And now, I mean, I, uh, it's, I mean they, the way that they seem to connect yeah. um, is super positive. I, th- I think it was really refreshing because we've been to England a whole bunch of times. And so, obviously, everybody is well aware of the English monarchy and I think if you know that then that's maybe what you have in your head if you aren't accustomed to being around a monarchy so it was really interesting to come here and see how different the monarchy is but also see that uh, it's so well loved and it's not polarizing like in the UK it's (coughs) very you either love it or you're either a royalist or you're not yeah and it's not that way here and everybody seems to love them especially love Margaret, and for good reason like she i really really appreciated that even though in england they have patronages and they support charities and stuff like she's very hands-on and she does art and she does you know she does her own artwork and gardening and all these different kinds of things she just seems super down to earth and like if you happen to be sitting next to her or something, she would totally have a cup of coffee with you, you know, and, and just talk uh, about the day. And the fact that she chose to leave, I think, is an example yes, of that. I which think so. I think what's important is that I, I feel like they're really trying to be much more modern. Yeah. Because the idea of a monarchy is kind of a bit old fashioned, you could say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so they're 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 being far more modern, and the fact that she's chosen to leave in this way, I think, is a mm. respectful thing, and everybody respects her for that. And if you look back to pictures of her when she was giving her speech on the exact same balcony, she was dressed yeah. in black because her father had just died. Yeah, you know, and the fact that instead of being in a position where you as a country and a person are mm. mourning while trying to also be celebratory of the person that's taking uh, taking the throne. It was all like a celebration. Yeah, it was like double celebration. Yeah. I really loved that. Okay. And and obviously I wish, you know, she could have uh, served until the end. But I really did love the fact that it gave everybody the opportunity to, while she's living, thank her and send so many messages. And all day long on TV, so they had people giving messages and things. And so we were able to really celebrate her reign and what she's done for Denmark and done for the monarchy. And while also celebrating her son coming to... The throne. I'm going to bring this up and make it seem like baseball. So in uh, <laughs> in baseball, if you're like a super famous player, 
there's not so there's like a handful of like like iconic players in baseball and what you do with them is when they like are on their last game mm. rather than playing the entire game in which case they're just kind of in the dugout at the end of the game yeah. is you let them go in on the last inning and then you take them out Halfway before through. the game's over yeah so everybody in the whole stadium can give them a standing they ovation do as they walk Halfway. off the field and then they can come back and break a <laughs> tip their hat and there's yeah. just this way to celebrate the end of this long career while it's still happening not yeah. after yeah, yeah, it's finished exactly. but while it's still happening and choosing to leave right then to be able to let everybody celebrate yeah. and be excited and share that and that's that's what it felt like is the fact that yeah as you say we can celebrate her yeah, we all and she can enjoy that and, enjoy and, it. and it's not like a, a very sad morning of passing and I think that's just the way to go, just like a really good baseball player. I feel like maybe she would have played softball if she was in the U.S. <laughs> many years ago. I don't know. But I mean, I hope that in in this retirement of sorts, you know, she has time to dedicate to the arts, to keep doing all of the things that she loves, and she could really enjoy just sitting back and, and maybe guiding Frederick as much as she can while enjoying her grandchildren and, you know, Doing the things that she wants to do and having quiet moments where, you know, she doesn't have to be the monarch. She can just be Marlia. I hope they don't, like, revoke her past to Tivoli, though. Oh, I mean, no. I guess I, I mean, think... I guess she can just, like, automatically be in some, like, renewal system or something. I feel like because I mean, she designed the uh, costumes for so many of the ballet, she's got lifetime costumes. Maybe. I, I don't know exactly how that works. I mean... <laughs> I'm not in the royal family, so I don't know. All right. Anyway, that's our view on the royal family. Let us know what you think of the new king. What you yes. think of everything that happened We're so excited over the past them. couple days and uh, I'm and all to that see stuff. What Prince Christian does. I know he's, he's well. He's the crown. His he's new role. the crown prince now. Christian. He's got a new role as and when his little baby Frederick will be born. <laughs> all right. That's it for this week's Travel and Young. See you. Bye. Bye.